Well, alrighty, folks, this is uh, litigation. We're going to talk about that physical and mental examination uh, under Rule 35 of the Rules of Civil Procedure. Very important to consider that the um, situation there is kind of uh, case by case within the discretion of the court. It uh, basically says within the sound discretion of the judge. So basically important uh, to note. In general, uh, the court can, where an action is pending, order a mental or physical uh, examination, including a blood group, which is to say DNA, uh, in any controversy. Uh, so that's uh, pretty important uh, to know. One of the things, though, sometimes if these uh, tests are onerous, just uh, brought to frustrate, uh, or cause delay, then the court uh, will consider those, uh, you know, waste of time and uh, just a, you know, kind of harassment type thing. So the court has to consider this. Well, before this even starts, uh, generally there has to be a motion and notice and then an order, and it has to be for good cause. So that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes this is variously re referred to as an IME, Independent Medical Examination. And uh, in a tort case, like a car wreck case or something like that, very common for this to happen. But in some other things like uh, custody cases and things like that, uh, sometimes there is uh, less of a likelihood that the court will order that. Uh, uh, under most circumstances. There has to be a good reason for that type of thing. Uh, especially like a mental examination about you know who would be the better person you know to be a custodian and so forth. Um, it also asks for uh, sp specifics in terms of time and place for the examination. In other words, what you're making people do is drop everything and report to a doctor's office, not their doctor, some strange doctor, and this could be a psychiatrist, it could be a surgeon, it could be a uh, neurologist, for example, any number of specialists. Now the examiner's uh, report, the party who is examined uh, can uh, make a request and receive a copy of the report. Uh, obviously, it's a port, report on their body, so uh, you know. So any report has to be in writing. Obviously, uh, the moving party can also receive a copy of the report. But and this is where, like in these mental health cases, I've had situations where uh, I've actually had a mother who was in a mental hospital, and the ex-husband wanted a copy of the mental health report. The problem that we got into on that was that the um, uh, ex-husband uh, had remarried to a different woman and she had been getting information about the ex-wife spreading it around the community and making her look bad and stuff like that. So really this was an argument between these two women more so than the woman and her ex-husband. So we got a protective order in that case so that the report would only be shared with the judge and not with either side uh, in order to kind of protect the woman's privacy from being like set out in more or less the gossip mill. So uh, that's one of those things that um, uh, can be important to look at in these kind of cases. Well this has been uh, pretty much the law since March of 1970 uh, and so um, you know, um, it is an ongoing thing. It does require a lot of uh, basically uh, consideration by the judge. He shouldn't just always grant these out of hand uh, because of situations like this where sometimes the requirements or the requests are just to cause trouble, uh, cause grief, and really not that important. Uh, you know, this is an ongoing problem around the country. Uh, it's uh, been uh, considered in Arizona, New Jersey, Michigan, Washington State, uh, and also Iowa are just a few. Uh, and so basically uh, there is 
uh, an issue here and it is generally along these same lines you know just how much information is needed to prove the case uh, and how much of it is uh, not in good faith and is being done just to cause trouble for the opposing party these are important considerations well give that some consideration look at it uh, tell me what you think on the discussion board and as always if you have problems or questions you can email me at this address or you can just communicate with me directly through the communication area uh, under send email in your course. Thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying these. Uh, let me know if I can help you.